And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. Always a busy day out there at KKTC True Country 99.9. Of course, Taos, New Mexico, and up into Colorado. And our friends at HighTideCountry.net out there, too, in Oklahoma. Streaming stations out there. And, of course, always the Sports Guys so Podcast.com. Our thanks to Deer Rouge for coming on, setting the tone today. And, of course, tomorrow, some more great shows. Kyle Park will come by, Texas Country Music, and a whole lot more. Allie Walker, a great Canadian country artist, doing her good thing. Uh, some great things out there, too, uh, coming up this week on Friday, April the 12th. Pleased to welcome in a group that I heard about just a few weeks ago, and I said, absolutely, we have to present them on the show and talk about all the great music coming out in an album called Us, coming out May the 3rd across all your streaming platforms out there. Bowen and Young to the program. How are you doing? Good. Uh, we're doing great. How are you? Good, man. And like I said, I was just kind of watching the eclipse outside about 1.45 Central Time today, 2 o'clock, and... Yeah, it was it was what it was. <laughs> a lot yeah. of people were with the glasses, kind of doing that. Did you guys get to see it at all? Not, uh, we not really. More just heard it. Yeah, it confused wildlife. Like, is it, <laughs> is it time to nest and go to bed? And just like, what's happening? And it got a little bit dark. But... Yeah, a lot of clouds in the sky here in Nashville, so we had a hard time actually seeing it. But uh, yeah, we went outside to you know experience it the best that we could. That's all you can do, no doubt about it, too. Well, let's talk about you guys and the backstory. Like I said, I love the the story is is awesome. We'll get into this album here in a little bit called Us, which comes out May 3rd. Uh, you guys meeting up, and of course, no stranger to music. You guys have been doing this for a long time. Uh, just talk to me about just the the inspiration, the kind of story behind it, and how you guys formed this group uh, called mm -hmm. Bowen and Young. Well, um, I suppose it was – we had wanted to do this for a long time. We The mm -hmm. first song we ever wrote um, was – I mean, gosh, back in 2014? Probably, yeah, 2014. And I called Brandon afterwards, and, and so it was for my solo record, and I called him and said, this is a duet, and I don't want to sing it with anybody else. Um, and we had just played the Bridgestone together. I had my first big solo show there um, outside of the show Nashville, and uh, that's what brought me to the city of Nashville. And the person I was meant to sing with that night who was doing all the duets with me got stage fright and bailed, um, so my team were like, it's all right. We know this guy. He's wonderful. We want you to write with him anyway. Um, and they called Brandon. Yeah. And I was, I was at home. I lived in this little garage apartment in downtown Nashville. And I was at the time I was touring with an artist named John Hyatt and we mm -hmm. were getting ready to go out on a long two to three month tour. Um, so I was at home just rehearsing songs, uh, Hyatt songs. And I got a text message and it just said, stop what you're doing, download this song and call me and it was a kind of an odd text so i did and i listened to the song and i picked up the phone and i said hey and the person on the other end said hey can you sing that song and i said uh yeah she said can you kill it and i said yeah <laughs> and she says great i need you at the bridgestone arena in 24 hours to sing with my client and uh and i said what are you talking about and she said claire bowman's my client she's got her first big solo show and we need you to come sing that duet and i said well I'm leaving at midnight on a tour bus with John Hyatt. I mean, this is going to be real tight. And she said, tell me you can make it work. And I said, well, I will make it work. So I went to the Bridgestone that evening and they walked me into her dressing room and I met her 20 minutes before we went on stage, ran through the song twice. And then we went out and played it for, you know, whatever, 15, 20,000 people, however many people were in the room that night. And uh, yeah, Claire and I kept in touch while I was on the road. And when we got home, when I got home, we started writing songs together and, you know, Writing songs is such a, mm -hmm. it's such an intimate art form that you get, you feel like you get to know somebody really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we were both bound and determined to be professionals and not fall in love, but, uh, well, that just didn't work out. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> you tried enough to, but you guys formed a great, a great duo here too. Hey, let's talk about uh, World Brand New, which came out, I know the first part this year in january curious to know kind of a little backstory of this one and um mm -hmm. really thought you guys really brought it brought this song to life and did it really really good justice no doubt oh thank, thank you. you it's about love of all different kinds um it's like whoever your world, world brand new is it's whoever makes you the happiest mm -hmm. um one of our sort of things during our shows and, and in all of our music is to make people feel like they belong they don't mm -hmm. feel like they belong anywhere else they belong right here with us mm -hmm. um and I don't know, World Brand New was, uh, we wrote it with Mickey Echo, um, and it just kind of fell out. Yeah, it was one of the last songs that we wrote for the record. And we've been in the studio working with Mickey, um, you know, quite a bit over the last couple of years. And, 
he sort of was humming this part and we sort of looked at each other and we're like i feel like we should write this like i think we should just chase this thing down and so we did and it was uh i think it was the last i think it was the last song written for the record I think it was too. Yeah. um but it just felt it felt really good you know it's almost uh you know I don't, somewhere between a party and a and a tent revival <laughs> it's so much fun to sing no doubt too as well. I love the the sound. I always I get a lot of duos come on too. Sometimes three and four piece bands, and it's really cool to talk about uh, the harmonies and things like that. You know, kind of what makes the song, and uh, you know who has the the bulk of the harmonies, or if you guys both share that too. How hard is it to to kind of pick? Uh, I guess who would do the harmonies, or you guys a little bit of both, no doubt about it too. But uh, who takes the lead? Who kind of does the you know the first stanza, maybe the second stanza of a song, third, and you guys really just you, you really just great pair to bring music to life. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I think it kind of changes with every song. Like um, with Water to Wine, which was the first song we wrote for the record um, as Bowen Young, um, that one, we, we recorded it one way, listened back and we're like, no, we've got to flip it around. We have a, mm -hmm. a similar range. Um, so it, like, it, it makes it sort of not easier, but more, you've got a bit more stretch when it comes to parts. Mm -hmm. And we have so much fun. But then when we listen back to the music, where uh, like we'll sometimes be trying to figure out like is that you or is that me? Yeah, sometimes so, I get confused and because I'll, I'll start singing a part and Claire's like, no, 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 you're singing my part. And it's like, ah, oh, are you sure? I'm listening to the record. It sounds like it's me. And it's so yeah. It's um, we we definitely enjoy sort of the the dance of like you know mm -hmm. finding harmony parts and and what makes the most sense. And you know some songs, you know, Claire will have a very clear vision and a feel for how the, the vocal should be delivered. And so she'll cut like her whole part and then I'll mm -hmm. sing to her. But then there's other songs where it'll be the reverse. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it just really just depends on the feel of the song. And um, but, you know, I, I would definitely say that that's one of your strengths that you have just like you, you sort of have a clear vision for the feel of how the vocal should be delivered. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it just makes the most sense for me to follow her. Like I follow her <laughs> all over the world. Sometimes it's the other Not... way around. I couldn't do it so I needed it. Love the story too. <laughs> Curious to know before I take a time out here real quick, we'll, we'll pay some bills here on the show, but also too, looking back at it, uh, as far as musical influences growing up, mm. everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's got a little side of this, a little side of that, or maybe a crossover of genres of music. Uh, talk about individually who you guys were influenced hmm. by growing up. Well, I wanted to be Springsteen. And I still kind of want okay. to be Springsteen. <laughs> yeah, was, <laughs> but growing up as a musical theater, like opera student, that really wasn't kind of on the cards. Uh, and I got to say, like, I never knew that music could be this much fun. Hmm. It's so it's so cool, like, getting to go up there and be yourself. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, I, I think... You know, I gr definitely grew up with a lot of country music in my life. Uh, my parents mm -hmm. are big country music fans. Um, you know, Johnny Cash was was and is, you know, my musical hero um, and somebody that I, you know, I just love everything he's done. Um, so but then, you know, later I, I sort of discovered artists like Jeff Buckley and, mm -hmm. you know, bands like Radiohead and U2 and Zeppelin and like, so sort of a, a bit all over the place, but I, I feel like, um, you know, if I had to point at one, it would be Johnny Cash. Hey man, like I said, I've been in Nashville, just got back from that CRS area down there too. And I've uh, been right past that Johnny Cash museum, looked in there, <laughs> I want to walk in. And of course the, the restaurant there too, love the uh, the restaurant there, walked in, almost got a t-shirt there. I may have to do it at CMA Fest when I come back, but uh, always Johnny Cash yeah. left his imprint and his footprint on uh, Music Road down there too at the same time too. More coming up here with Claire Bowen and uh, Brandon Robert Young of uh, Bowen and Young here just a little bit. We'll take a quick time out. More to come here from our sponsors, KKTC, True Country, 99.9 and our friends at High Tide Country. Net. The Picture. Caden Gordon Show. Today's best country mix is a two-hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecadengordonshow.com for more information on the show.
Ever thought about owning your own business? Tanya Lapsley Cockett did. She decided a little over five years ago that she was going to be an entrepreneur, so she started her travel business. Tanya is married and works a full-time job. Her business has given her amazing opportunities. Not only does she get to help people create memories by booking their vacations, sporting and entertainment tickets, rental cars, etc., but it has also allowed her to help other families create legacy income. The travel industry is extremely lucrative and is an $8 trillion industry. The travel industry is projected to earn in excess of $15 trillion over the next 10 years. The travel industry pays its professionals up to 70 to 80% commission on the travel that they book for themselves and their clients. As a travel business owner, Tanya books travel and teaches others how to own and operate their own travel business. She is a director in training on the marketing side of her business, where she has helped over 90 families start their own businesses. If you're interested in owning your own travel business, please contact Tanya at 917-743-1199 or at ladytlc3555 at me.com. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And, of course, new time slot, April 15th, KKTC True Country, 6.30 to 7 o'clock right there in prime time. All the Backstage Pass episodes to catch out there. And always at HighTideCountry.net. Back here with Claire Bowen and Brandon Robert Young from the group uh, Bowen and Young out there, too. Check out the music and across all these social media out there, too. All right, I got to talk about this. Us comes out May 3rd. Chance to pre-order now and catch a couple songs off there. Four songs to be uh, it, just to, to know that out there. World brand new we talked about, too. But I'm curious to know. Pre-order now, and I want people to check this one out, Hair of the Dog. Got to dive into this, too, which is a lot of fun, and you guys really, again, brought this to life and a little bit of uh, versatility in this song I liked. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a fun one to write. You know, we were... Sing, too. It's a lot of fun to sing, um, and we, you know, we were in with our producer, Sean McConnell, and that was, uh, you know, another one that was sort of, uh, you know, last in a batch of songs that we were working on. We were, yeah. we were slated to start recording on a Monday morning and we decided to go out to the studio and just sort of get set up on Sunday. And so we were sitting around and thought, let's just, uh, I don't know, let's see if there's a song in the room. And so, you know, you know, Sunday afternoon, we wrote, we wrote Hair of the Dog and it was, a, it was a lot of fun to sort of, um, Sean is Sean McConnell. If you don't know him, you need to know him. His music is is brilliant, mm -hmm. and he's he's a wonderful singer, artist, and absolutely a hysterical character. And mm -hmm. so we had a lot of laughs writing that song, and uh, are really happy with the way it it turned out. It's just uh, it's a fun one. Yeah. Be a great project coming up too. You mentioned Water to Wine, Hair of the Dog, a World Brand New, and of course all these great songs. They're going to be on this upcoming. Uh, body of work when it comes out May 3rd. Talk about this uh, this project. And I always say, for me, because I get to listen to a lot of albums in advance before they come out too, just uh, I guess one of the perks of this program. But when I hear a song like Water to Wine, it's always important to me to really check out the leadoff song on the record because I really feel like a song like that or a song just in general can set the tone for the rest of the mm -hmm. record, especially if you're like me and you like listening to everything on there. Talk about how important that is to like lead off a record, set the tone with mm -hmm. a tune like Water to Wine, and then just a little, a lot of the body of work in this project, what you guys are most excited about to see this come, come to fruition May the 3rd. Yeah, we're, we're stoked. Um, Water to Wine was the only write that we, we wrote over Zoom on like during the pandemic and Water to Wine was the only, it was our first write with Sean McConnell and it was the only song we were able to finish on, on a Zoom call because it's <laughs> kind of like purgatory because there's always a leaf blower or like something. There's, yeah. Like it's mm -hmm. really loud, the sound cuts out, it's terrible. Um, but we made friends with Sean uh, like this and wrote Water to Wine. And it was a sound that we'd been searching for for a really long time. Um, and trying to figure out what that was called, that we kind of dubbed it Cinematic Americana um, because it has to be everything at once. Um, 
and water to wine is about the miracle that is true love like we never thought that we would find each other yeah um and it's in like such a this world can be really tough so to find like your person i don't know a lot of people mm -hmm. aren't that lucky we we know how lucky we are and, yeah and it really informed the sound of the record well again i would say that that song was the catalyst for us going and making the record with sean mcconnell was you know we after we finished writing the song months later sean had us out to his studio and and said hey we should take a crack at you know recording this thing and so we went out and spent the day with him and worked on the song and when we got in the truck to drive home we weren't in the in the truck two minutes and claire said he's the one mm -hmm. he's the he's the one we have to make the record with and so like you said it you know setting the tone with the lead off track you know not only for us was it poetic that it was the very first song that we wrote with sean mm -hmm. and that it was the very first mm -hmm. song of the album but it really did it set the tone and um you know and then ultimately one of the really cool things that was uh, that we were able to experience with that song was uh when we signed our record deal with our, our label out of london um we were able to to put water to wine out as our very first single um <laughs> on the label the day that we played bst hyde park in london opening for billy Ooh, joel yep. and <laughs> it was wow it was wild man it was wild you know like seventy-five thousand people and just uh you know get to play you know play these songs that nobody had ever heard before but mm -hmm. you know water to wine was the the first one out of the gate yeah Let's talk about the other one here uh, off the record, too. People pre-order now. You can actually get a little bit of this, a little bit of that from the songs we're talking about right now. No, the rest you got to wait till May 3rd. That's why they called it an album release. Uh, <laughs> and I will not, <laughs> not share any information. We'll just talk about songs here and prep them here. But there is one off there uh, beautifully done called Halo. Let's dive into that one a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think Halo is, a you know, it's a, you know, a massive hit song that Beyonce made, you know, incredibly famous and and it's been streamed billions of times and mm -hmm. you know it, it was a song that claire you know had an idea uh, you know a few years back and she sort of just floated it to to me and just said hey you know i, I would love to hear you sing that song have you, you know you know would you ever think about you know trying to work up a version of it you know and if i'm honest i was a very intimidated by the song you know it's like mm -hmm. beyonce is one of the greatest singers to ever live and it's a you know, brilliantly written song. Um, and, you know, at some point during the pandemic, I had a time with a guitar in my hands, you know, because we were at home and there wasn't anywhere to go. And, mm -hmm. I, and I did a lot of songwriting. And, uh, you know, at one point, I just kind of went in the music room and closed the door and sort of started noodling through the changes of that song and sort of singing through it. And uh, it felt really good to sing. And so I brought it out to Claire and just to see kind of what she you know how she, how she felt about it and we were able to sort of work out the arrangement that ultimately went on went on the record and it, it just feels really uh mm -hmm. it feels it's such a beautiful song it just feels really great to have an opportunity to sing it it's so funny that it's come out now when beyonce has just made a, a country record like there's no way sure. we could have possibly predicted that we're like okay uh and we found out <laughs> um the other day that it's uh it's on the americana charts so which, I don't know, it's just such a lovely, we feel very lucky. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's so funny that it was an idea from years and years ago. And I was like, try it. And Brandon was like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then finally he did it. It's like exactly the right time. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> no, the cool, well, cool thing is, like I said, I love the versatility and the things that you guys can do with your vocals. It just makes y'all one of my favorite pairs out there, Bowen and Young, across all those digital streaming uh, platforms out there. We're going to take our final time out, come back with a little bit of rapid fire. We'll talk a little bit more. Uh, a couple songs off there from the Us album, which is due out uh, May the 3rd. We'll also get into one called Helpless, which I really feel like this duo really put a great, great feel for a song that really, they bring it to life when I talk about their music. Be sure and check them out at Bowen & Young across all the streaming platforms. And, of course, where you check out everybody on social media out there, too. We'll take a quick time out here, too, for our friends over there. If you're looking for that best message out there for christian country music check out my buddy jonathan bond out there too he does a lot of great work out there and positive uplifting messages for christian country music click the link below check him out at jonathanbond.com too and also if you're looking for some jewelry out there too look no further than our friends at the jewelry by tommy too as well which is great out there love jewelry by tommy uh, your spouse friend family member has got you covered email our friend tom burley at burley system at yahoo.com today to order handcrafted handmade it's jewelry 
by Tommy. More with our friends Bowen and Young here on the program. Final segment coming up here. Stay tuned. More to come. Ever thought about owning your own business? Tanya Lapsley Cockett did. She decided a little over five years ago that she was going to be an entrepreneur, so she started her travel business. Tanya is married and works a full-time job. Her business has given her amazing opportunities. Not only does she get to help people create memories by booking their vacations, sporting and entertainment tickets, rental cars, etc., but it has also allowed her to help other families create legacy income. The travel industry is extremely lucrative and is an $8 trillion industry. The travel industry is projected to earn in excess of $15 trillion over the next 10 years. The travel industry pays its professionals up to 70 to 80% commission on the travel that they book for themselves and their clients. As a travel business owner, Tanya books travel and teaches others how to own and operate their own travel business. She is a director in training on the marketing side of her business, where she has helped over 90 families start their own businesses. If you're interested in owning your own travel business, please contact Tanya at 917-743-1199 or at ladytlc3555 at me.com. The Kate and Gordon Show is a two-hour show playing the best in country music. So check it out at thecadeandgordonshow.com. Again, that is thecadeandgordonshow.com. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here with Claire Bowen and Brandon Robert Young. I just love the name Bowen and Young. Just connects very well out there, too, across all the streaming platforms. The new album, Us, comes out May the 3rd. Check it out now. Pre, pre-order and, of course, get those songs we talked about. Uh, leading off the record, Water to Wine, Halo, and all the other good stuff out there, too, across all these streaming uh, platforms. I want to go back a little bit and talk about Helpless because I got a chance to check out that particular song. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just throw the other one out there, too. Darling, oh, darling. Start with either one of those. Let's dive into this. <laughs> Well, yeah, Helpless was a song. Um, Claire was uh, Claire and I went to Australia and lived in Melbourne for two months, and she was uh, she was filming a television series out there. And so while she would be on set, I was in a, our hotel room, and um, you know, I just spent every day drinking coffee and and writing songs. And that mm-hmm. was one of the songs that I wrote in that hotel room, and then we uh i played it for claire and and she it resonated with her and so when we got back to nashville uh we called up our buddy doug lancio who is uh he's just a brilliant guitar player musician um he's actually uh plays bob uh, plays guitar for bob dylan now Mm -hmm. and asked him if he'd be willing to produce a few tracks on us and helpless was one of them and so we went in the studio and um cut that song down in a day yeah. and uh it was uh it, it was really fun actually the yeah. way that that it all came together and and actually a, a bit of trivia about the the recording of the song uh the very first verse and chorus were from a demo that we had just played through acoustically in the room that's right and it lined up exactly yeah so it, it was just we had just stood around a, a microphone at doug's studio and recorded that uh just the two of us and then we went into when we went into the big studio later and started Mm -hmm. recording with the band doug loved the demo version so much that he took the first verse and chorus and put it right up against where the band drops in and the tempo and everything lined up perfectly so that's actually how the uh how that recording came together totally forgot about that yeah and uh, darling and darling you wrote years ago yeah darlin darlin i wrote oh man that was probably 2010 maybe Mm -hmm. and uh i was i was asked to sing at the ryman auditorium uh for a a a a group of artists 
uh, sort of headed up by Emmy Lou Harris, uh, mm-hmm. who was tr- making a push to, you know, save some mountains in uh, the state of West Virginia. And a lot of people were record or recording or covering uh, coal miner songs. Mm-hmm. And so I did a deep dive on a bunch of coal miner songs and they they were all so beautiful, but for whatever reason, they just didn't feel right at the time. And so I I wrote Darlin' Oh Darlin' sort of with that in mind of like what sort of my version of a coal miner song would be. And uh, I, I played it for my manager and she sent it to Emmylou Harris and and Emmylou Harris said, yeah, he's got to do it. So he's got to he's got to play it on the show. So I um, I got to play that one uh, just by myself with acoustic guitar at the Ryman Auditorium. And it was uh, that was a special night. Mm-hmm. Love this other one you guys did uh, out there, too, called Dangerous Love. And first of all, I just love that title that's out there <laughs> across all the streaming platforms, too. But when I saw that one, too, I was like, you know, I look at song titles a lot just as much as I listen to the track itself. And listening to the the track, it really understood the message. And I feel like, you know, we could all resonate with a little bit of, of that particular song. Let's break that one down a little bit. Hmm. Well, that one came about, um, it was actually one of the catalysts for becoming Bo and Young. Um, Mm -hmm. We were solo artists for a really long time and it was wonderful. We're very grateful, but um, this, the experience that that made that song happen really sort of put in front of us that if you want to do your dreams, you have to do them now. Um, We actually had a home invasion. Um, We were, gosh, it was like uh, almost midnight on a Sunday night. And uh, I saw the security camera then go off on my phone and I called out to Brandon who was in the next room. I was like, baby, there's somebody hunting around the truck. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, yeah, I can see him out the window. He's standing, he's near the front door now. Um, so we thought, oh, this is weird. It's We don't know who it is. So we went down to the front door and made some noise. Just like sometimes kids check car doors to steal mm-hmm. change or whatever. We didn't want to like ruin anyone's life. Went down there and there was no one there. Um, but our dog, Phelan, who's a 200 pound Irish wolfhound was <laughs> <laughs> really agitated. <laughs> So yeah. When a dog that size is agitated, the furniture is moving around. So we're like, all right, this is not like what's what's going on. And Brandon, being the more intelligent half of this uh, establishment, <laughs> was like, I'm just going to go down to the next level and make sure everything's fine. I'm sure it's okay. Um, and he didn't get 12 steps from the back door when we heard it swing open. Um, wow. So we, yeah, we ran upstairs and barricaded ourselves in our bedroom, called 911 and listened and we listened to this person and walk through our house and I thought it's awful, but he's, you know, he's, I can hear him going past the music room. He'll, mm-hmm. he'll take everything and it's fine. I hope he gets a hernia carrying it to the truck. He knows what that is too, clearly. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, it changed when he walked past the music room and started up the stairs to our room and then proceeded to try and beat our door down uh, to get to us. And it was, yeah, it was wild. It definitely puts in front of you what you will do for the person that you love the most. Cause I'm, I was holding onto the dog so that he didn't run at the door and Brandon was on the other side mm-hmm. of me. Um, just it, when your whole world is suddenly at stake for no reason whatsoever in the most violent manner, um, it, there's something that you can't come back from. And oh mm-hmm. gosh, we, <laughs> the police thankfully arrived literally right before the door split. Um, he was hitting mm-hmm. it that hard. And we, wow. gosh, we, after like four o'clock in the morning, you end up standing there and there's detectives have gone home and they've asked you all these questions, the same one over and over again. And we were like, did that really just happen? And like, yep. And then another alarm went off on the phone and it said we had a, um, a right with Sean McConnell, our producer, uh, in not very long at all. So we were like, that's feeling really, um, um creative right now, but we decided we weren't going to let that individual take any more joy from us. And we drove out there and Sean was like, what are you doing here? Because we, we had told him what happened uh, the night before. Mm-hmm. And he was like, all right, let's just, I'm going to make some tea and we'll talk. And we talked and talked and talked. And then we, like he said, what if it sounds a little bit like this? And within a half an hour, dangerous love came tumbling out. And we knew we, I don't know, if it can be something that encourages people to, to go and get help. Uh, after something mm-hmm. traumatic has happened yeah um that's kind of what we tried to yeah i do mean with it. i was uh, after that experience i didn't sleep for months i was i had a i had a hard time with it just um because i'd never mm-hmm. been confronted with an experience like that and so i uh 
sought out, you know, a, a therapist and was able to go through months of, of therapy, just working through the process. And, you know, and I had some, some, some people in my life who were sort of like walking me through it as well. The ex special forces and, and folks who had been in the military and experienced some pretty crazy things. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, between, sort of the military influence of like how you deal with situations and and them sort of encouraging me that we had done the right thing but then also going through it with a trauma therapist you know it was one of those things where i was able to start sleeping again uh you know i felt like it was not something that i was allowing to sort of have control over me and sort of just stay inside of me um and so yeah that's for us it's just really important like for people if if they've had something traumatic happen or mm -hmm. there's a mountain in front of them that seems too big to climb, you know, it's, uh, it's not weakness to go get help, you know? Uh, so, sure. it, you know, we think it's just really important to try to encourage people if, if they feel like they need, uh, need help to, to go ask for it. Yeah. A great song out there too. Dangerous love across all the streaming platforms. Us comes out uh, May the 3rd, coming up here in just a few weeks. Exciting times for Claire Bowen and Brandon Robert Young. All right, let's have a little fun out there too. We got all the good music stuff out of the way too. Of course, there is one more song I'm going to hit on here in just a second too. But as far as a date night, you guys go out and have, have just fun, wait for music, or maybe music's still involved. Uh, what do you like to do for fun? We sit at a lot of bars together. Well, it's not a lot. We do it a lot. It's like two that we go to. Yeah. Um, we love a good Irish pub mm -hmm. with traditional okay. Irish music. Yeah. Um, so if we can find a good Irish pub with a proper, you know, pint of Guinness and uh, fiddle you know, player. A, a fiddle player, you know, some traditional Irish, you know, classics, uh, that's, that's something we like to do. Uh, we're not really fancy dinner people. Uh, okay. so we kind of like laid back, very sort of casual environments, uh, when you, when we go mm -hmm. out to, to dinner yes. and, and then we have two of our best, uh, family friends are here in the, our neighborhood. So we can literally walk to their houses. So, I mean, some of the best nights that I can ever remember are just walking to our friend's house and just, you know, hanging out, listening to music and chatting and, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're kind of homebodies, but uh, we get out There's of nothing every wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> We have very good friends. I'm the same way. My, my wife and my kid, four year old, it's just, it's time to be at home. And I mean, it's like half the time you've had a full day of just everything going on to you come home. You just want to like eat something, go to bed. Yep. There's nothing wrong with the homebody type, put something on television. In my case, it'd be like a, a sports or music, listen to tracks or something, just take it easy. And Really just nice. kind of uh, mellow out out there, too. I want to ask you about another song that I got a chance to check out, uh, Skeletons. I thought this was really cool uh, that you guys put this out. I believe that was 2022 uh, when I saw mm. that come out that year, too. Let's let's dive into that one a little bit and kind of the message it's sending to, to music fans out there. Oh, gosh. Um, I suppose, well, it was written, we wrote it with our dear friend Amy Mariello, uh, who is mm -hmm. actually one of those people that we go and hang out in the living room and <laughs> do nothing <laughs> but chat. Um, she's wonderful. Um, and I suppose when we first met, we had both decided separately, having been completely traumatized by romantic love, that we didn't want anyone else near us ever mm. again. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember distinctly thinking like I, I had been through something terrible and I really didn't want to get any of it on you, but mm -hmm. I really, really liked you. I was like, please just just stay over there because I'm an absolute train wreck. And he was like, oh, it's okay. I'm a bus crash. So we kind of just... I don't know, it, I would so much rather a love that celebrates, like it's easy to celebrate people's strengths and like the shiny bits, but a love that loves a person for everything that they are, the things mm -hmm. that they've been through and, and their weaknesses and all of their vulnerable spots. I think that's that's what I would prefer um, and it's what we have. Yeah. So that's where the tagline come from. Amy came over, she was like, what do you think about like your skeletons don't scare me? And we were like, dude. Let's go. Come on. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's start that car and just drive that thing all the way to yeah. writing a song. No doubt about it. Let's pin that thing. <laughs> all right. Let's have a little fun with this one. Who does the cooking in the household? Oh, we both do. Yeah. 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 Both. both right. do. Like Claire's that. a fantastic cook. Um, I like to, you know, you know, grill a steak in a, you know, mm. a cast iron skillet. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, I, I would say I'm pretty limited. I, I, I know how to make a few things, but you know, I, I definitely 
I love to, you know, pull out the sous vide and prepare the steak and then, you know, grill some vegetables and make a salad. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one, she doesn't need a cookbook. She can just whip stuff together. Sure. So. <laughs> well, having said that, we kind of eat like 12 year olds sometimes. Like when we get off tour, all we want to eat is chicken nuggets. And it's just That's embarrassing. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm right there with you too. It happens to everybody too out there too. When you have They're a hard great. day at work. And... I mean... <laughs> Yep. Sometimes you just need a nugget, man. Like, don't judge you do, me. man. And a Dr. Pepper or Coke to go with it too. Like I said, whatever your beverage of choice is, it's it's got to have nuggets and fries and good yep. old what, whatever your your spot is. Yeah, free entry food. No doubt. Yes, no doubt about it. The the the, the cheat food, but you got to have it on uh, several days that you're not supposed to have it. But hey, when you get off the road and you're busy schedule, that's all you want to do. I want to check out the rest of this album too, as I've already done. You need to go do the same too out there for all the listeners of the backstage pass. Uh, it's called Us. It comes out May the third uh, from the great Claire Bowen and Brandon Robert Young, two just tremendously musically gifted musicians out there too. Been in a long time, a Nashville recording artist, and formed this great group called Bowen and Young. Again, Us comes out May the 3rd. Check it out. All the great songs we talked about today are available for streaming purposes out there. I want to thank uh, you both, Claire and Brandon, for coming on too as well. Uh, looking forward to checking out this album even further. See what my listeners have to say about it too as well. I've already checked it out, all the songs, so make sure you <laughs> guys do that across all those streaming uh, platforms. Hope you had a great chat, and let's uh, let's definitely do this again. Keep me in mind, no doubt. Thanks. Let's do it again. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. Have a great night. You got it. Bowen and Young out there too. Claire Bowen, Brandon, Robert Young. Of course, that group will form it and also come out May the 3rd across all those streaming platforms. Thanks to our sponsors and, of course, everybody, the sports guys at podcast.com and, of course, everybody out there at hightidecountry.net and also KKTC True Country 99.9 .9 will be on in the morning with Shelly on the call, another artist spotlight feature of the day and a whole lot more with some radio calls coming up this week on KKTC True Country 99.9. .9. Until then, take care and God bless.